Welcome to Excel Magic Tricks 1745. We got to see how to create a random data set. We want to be able to change the month number to three, and instantly our data set updates, change the number of rows to 15, and bam, we have a brand new, different data set. To create a start date from a month and year input, we can use the date function. There's the year, comma, the month, and the day will always be 1. Close parentheses and Enter. To get a dynamic end of the month, we use end of the month function, arrow to get the start date. And for months, we can jump forward with plus 1, backwards with minus 1. But if we put a 0, that gives us the end of whatever the current month is. Close parentheses and Enter. Now we'll start off with number of rows in the table equal to 10, but we can change that later. There's the min units, the max units that we'll use here. And we'll use these two tables in these two columns. Now, if you don't have Microsoft 365, we can simply use ran between, which generates a random integer between a bottom and top number using a uniform distribution, meaning the probability of selecting between these two is the same for each number. Now, dates are serial numbers, so we can use ran between. There's the bottom. There's the top. Now, when I close parentheses and Control Enter, of course, dates are serial numbers, so we have to add some number formatting. Now, I'm going to add number formatting to all 200 potential rows. I'm watching my screen tip, and when I get to 200, there we go. Home ribbon tab, drop down, and I'll just use short date. Now, if you don't have Microsoft 365, you just have to copy this down 10 rows. But if you have Microsoft 365, instead of ran between, we use rand array, the number of rows. There's our input comma, one column, so we skip that. The min, start date, comma, max, end date. Now, if you don't put integer in as an argument, it'll default to generating a number with decimals. And we don't want that for a date. So we'll put true or 1, close parentheses, and Enter. Now, if I change this to 15, bam, random dates in 15 rows. I'm going to leave it at 10. And if I hit the F9 key, Rand Array each time generates a new set of random numbers. For the units column, we can use the same formula, 10 rows, comma, comma. But the min will be 1, comma. The max will be 200, comma, 1, close parentheses, and Enter. F9 randomizes. For product, We'll use the lookup function index, and we want to randomly select between four text items. So array, h3 to h6, comma. And in row number, we get to use rand array again. There's 10 rows, comma, comma. The min will be 1, comma. And we could count these. Or for the max, I'm going to use rows and say how many rows are there. Close parentheses, comma, 1. And when I close parentheses, row number has rand array. And that will generate an array of random row numbers between 1 and 4. And index, when I close parentheses and hit Enter, will randomly select product names. If I hit F9, everything's randomizing. Now for the price, we don't have to use rand array. We can simply use XLOOKUP and lookup array. We'll give it a function argument array operation. I'm giving XLOOKUP 10 product names, comma, to find a match there in the lookup array, comma. And please return the prices from i3 to i6. Close parentheses and Enter. Now we actually want to apply a discount based on units. And instead of using XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP, because the units table is always sorted by the first column, smallest to biggest, I'm going to use the easiest formula I know. And this is the original lookup function, lookup. And we'll use this second option, lookup array. 
we're going to give it a function argument array operation of units, comma. And what's so nice about this second option here with array is I give it the table. And unlike VLOOKUP, LOOKUP always gets the value from the last column. So there's only two arguments to enter here, close parentheses and enter. Now we want to combine these two together. And if we look up in the formula bar for all of these formulas, any cell below the top cell will show the formula as grayed out because the formula only lives in the top cell. So right here, if I hit F2 and try to copy it, it's not going to let me. So I come up to the top cell, F2, and I'll copy. And when I hit F2, I want to multiply the result from XLOOKUP, so times. And I cannot just put the lookup formula because that has the discount. I have to put in parentheses $1 minus whatever the discount is. When I close parentheses, that gives me the net price equivalent, or how many pennies to multiply by each dollar of price. And now that formula will work. When I hit Enter and hit the F9 key, everything's working. Well, except for I want to round this. So I come to the top cell, F2. And after the equal sign, we need to round whatever that result is and round it to the penny. So I'm counting from the decimal 1, 2. That's the penny position. So at the end, comma, number of digits, 2. That's where round is going to round, to the penny. Close parentheses and Enter. F9. I come up here, change this to 12, Enter. Change the month to 2. Everything's working. All right, here's your bonus formula. Now when we use RAND array or RAND between, it generates numbers with the same probability throughout the distribution. If you want to use a different distribution, like the bell-shaped distribution, we could use the norm.inverse function. Now, the probability, that's for the whole bell curve, which under the curve is 100%. So we use the RAND function, which generates a number between 0 and 1, which will serve as the probability for choosing, comma, some number from the distribution based on a mean. We'll say the mean of 44. That's the average, comma, with a standard deviation of 10, close parentheses. Now when I hit Enter and hit the F9 key, it is not generating a uniform distribution. Most of the numbers are going to be hovering right around the mean in accordance with that standard deviation of 10. The problem with this is, and I tried a bunch of things, sequence in here and all sorts of things, this doesn't have an equivalent like RAND array that can generate an array of numbers. But I use this type of formula all the time, and I just copy it down. And we can get a number of distributions all in the same formula. I could say, hey, choose. And for the index number, I'll RAND between 1 and 3. Now we have a random number, 1 to 3, an index, which allows us to choose one of the formulas we're going to put into value 1, value 2, and value 3. Now I'm going to take the int of that norm.inverse. That'll be value number 1, comma, ran between, and I'll say between 1 and 5, close parentheses, comma, and then ran between, and I could use these numbers over here, 1, comma, and 200. I could put these numbers up here in the assumption table also. But what this formula is doing, choose, is now in various cells going to deliver different random numbers based on different distributions and min and max. So you can get Control Enter, copy it down, a bunch of num errors. Because F2 at the top, this is not a spilled array formula. I forgot to lock these. Now, this is different than a spilled array. This is a formula copied down. And since I have it already highlighted, when I F2 the top cell, I can edit just that top cell. And now, because it's highlighted, I can use Control-Enter to populate that formula down through the cells. And now if I F9 you're getting a more varied set of numbers based on randomization. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up. 
leave a comment and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.